All right, greetings YouTube University, Del Puckett here. And this is going to be an extended guitar video lesson um, for the three string cigar box guitar. Um, I'm gonna talk about basic blues tricks. Um, I'm gonna cover everything from rhythm tricks to techniques. So there's gonna be something in here for both the beginners and the advanced people alike. So there's gonna be something for everyone. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm in tune to E, B, E. So standard cigar box tuning is a 1-5-1 one, one interval relationship. So those notes could be, in this case here, E, B, E. They could also be F, C, F, G, D, G. D, A, D, it doesn't matter as long as it's a one, five, one ratio or interval. What that does is it gives you a power chord, a one finger power chord that you can move around. Um, okay, so tuning is very important. I would suggest getting yourself a tuner and tuning it up with the tuner and then practice detuning and retuning so that you can hear what it sounds like when you're in tune. Say, for example, this is in tune. This is out of tune. And then you just bring it back. You want to use your ear so you can hear that interval. It should sound like one note. So you want to you want to tune the wiggle out. So practice tuning. Get good at tuning. The very th first thing you should do whenever you pick up a guitar, um, any kind of a guitar, especially a three string cigar box guitar, because all you have is three strings, so you wanna make sure that they're in tune, is tune that thing. If, if you're good at anything, get good at tuning your guitar. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is timing. So I encourage people, if they wanna get good at any kind of music, especially blues, that they would develop a strong rhythm pattern, a strong strumming pattern. So I like to start out with just a 4-4 swing beat. In other words, when I say 4-4, it's like a measure of 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And what I like to do is do my strokes so that the downstroke is on the numeric and the upstroke is on the end. For example, it'd be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So this is more of a feel thing. We're going to internalize this feel and then we're gonna play heavy on the accents. In other words, so it's gonna sound like this. You gotta count out loud. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So you can almost feel the beat. Do, do, da, do, 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 da. So what I like to do is I like to swing everything. Um, and this helps me to establish and to develop a groove. I'll give you an example. Um, okay, so I wanna talk about learning the names of the chords, okay? Because a lot of people either blow this off or, or they get bogged down because it's too complicated or whatever. But I would suggest and I would encourage you to learn the names of the notes on the fretboard. And they could be in context to whatever key you're tuning in, right? So in this case here, if I'm tuned to E, E, B, E, right? It's kind of just like a guitar. So like the first, first one is F, F sharp, G, G sharp, a, A sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. The double dot is the octave. Okay, but so rather than learn the names, right, I learned the positional relationship of the names of the chords, rather, for example. So in this case here, we'd have E, okay? This here would be a, what they call a, a, a flat nine. It's kind of a real dissonant sound, right? Here's a major nine or, or a um, major two. 
Here's the, here is the flatted third or the minor third. So you can just think of that as the minor third of whatever key you're in. Here's the major third. Jingle bells. It's the major third. Here's the four. So the fifth fret is the fourth. Then you have the flat five and the five. The flat six and the six. The flat seven, the major seven, and back to the root. So I know it might sound a bit overwhelming, but it's just like memorizing a person's name when you meet them for the first time. You have to memorize the names of these chords and not just memorize their names, but where they're at in context of the key that you're in. That is very, very, very important and I'm not gonna let you off the hook. You have to memorize those names, the names of the notes. Okay, so uh, I also wanna talk about learning the structure of the 12 bar blues progression. Okay, so we have 12 bars or 12 measures. Okay, and so each one of these measures, each one of the 12 sequential measures is going to be one of the chords in the key. So for example, uh, 12 bar blues in key of E here, I'm going to do the first four measures. I'm just going to do, the, I'm just going to stick to the root of the key right here. So it'll be like one and two and three and four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, on the fifth measure, you go to the four chord, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, Four, back to the root. One, two, three, four. Root, two, three, four. The ninth measure, you're going to come up here to the seventh fret, which is the five. One, two, three, four. Then for the tenth measure, you go back down to the four chord. Two, three, four. For the eleventh measure, this is called the turnaround. For the eleventh measure, you're going to go back to the root. Two, three, four. Then the last twelfth measure, common out, common chord, is you go back to the five chord. And then the whole thing repeats all over again. So here's the example of the 12 bar blues progression. Again, swing that, right? All right, so moving along here, I'm going to talk about what I call um, learning the blues scale. All right, so if you're in the context of blues, this is a blues basics lesson, right? We're gonna learn the blues scale, which is a simple scale. Um, whatever key you're in, open, right here, in this case here, we're E, so we're gonna do an E minor pentatonic. And so that is the root, the flat third, the four. We're gonna do the flat five, that's called the blue note, back to the five, which is the seventh fret, up to the flatted seven, which is the tenth fret, up to the double dot, which is the root again. So it's a it's a minor pentatonic with a flat five. So that again, that's another scale where you're gonna have to internalize it and memorize it and all the different patterns all up and down the neck. That's the blue scale. Um, here's a trick. Okay, now, now we're moving into the more advanced stuff, okay? So, what I like, I like to call this slur, slur, 
your thirds. Okay, so what are the thirds again? We have the, the minor third here on the uh, third fret, and you have the major third on the fourth fret. Well, if you would know, um, uh, if you studied what I call just intonation, you would know that the actual position of this minor third is actually sh a little bit sharper than where that fret position is at. And the actual position of the note of the major third is a little bit flat from where the fret is on an equal tempered system, right? So, so what I'm saying is basically the thirds are wrong um, on a 12 tone equal tempered system. Okay, so the slide guys can get to those in-between notes. Uh, guitar players are always bending, right, to get in, into those in-between notes. But if you go by just the frets, right, you're going to be wrong. So what I like to do is what I call slur the thirds. We're going to dance around them. We're going to bend in and out of them. We're going to slide around. We're going to imply the notes a lot of times. Sometimes you mute them. Sometimes you just bounce off them. Sometimes you just play staccato. Whatever the case is, we're going to kind of like duck and weave whenever it comes to like the thirds. Here's the, here's the example. <laughs> So I'm not committing, right? I'm just kind of kind of hit dancing around there and then getting off it, right? So so here's the minor third into the major third. And you can go up to the five. So slur your thirds. Okay, and then the final thing I want to talk about is what I call it. It's a trick, and I call this trick stick to the lick. What do you mean by stick to the lick? All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to pick a lick. It could be any lick. Uh, pick a good lick, right, because you're going to be playing this thing over and over and over and over again. And uh, here's the idea. So, so in the context of a 12-bar blues progression, we're going to take this lick, and we're going to play it at the, either at the end of every measure or at the beginning of every measure and then we have to exercise discipline and we have to stick to the lick throughout the entire um, 12 bar blues progressions here's here's the example I'm gonna do a simple one but the, the more complex the lick actually the more sophisticated the sound here but I'm just gonna go uh, it's just a hammer on to the on the uh, middle string to the third fret and then the open string here on the uh, high string so that's that's my lick okay so it's I know it's kind of boring but it's the idea of the, in context so I'm gonna go uh, So that was an example of putting the lick at the end of each measure in a 12 bar blues. So now I'm going to put the same lick at the beginning of the measure. So there's lots of cool things you can do in the context of blues. The, uh, the main idea is to be creative, right? Have fun, to, to be loose, to be fluid, to jam. And so um, that's pretty much it. So I would encourage you guys to keep playing, to keep applying yourself, keep digging for knowledge, keep striving for, for mastery of your instrument. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have found something interesting or at least useful, helpful in this video. Um, so that's it, and you've heard me say, right, six strings are three strings too many. People ask me, why, why do you only three strings? And so I tell them, well, you know, a lot of reasons, but you know, six strings are definitely three strings too many. I'm gonna start telling people now, why spread yourself thin when you can go deep? All right, that's it until next time. Talk to you later.